Tonight's creepypasta from SpongeBob is called Hopes and written by K Maestro. The buzzing of my phone pulled my eyes away from the road. An image of a smirking dark-haired woman and the words heartbreaker filled the phone screen. I thought about answering it and screaming at her to call Dylan. He'll keep you warm at night while I'm working. Dylan is more trustworthy too. What an upgrade you made, you selfish wench, scoffed Jack. But that wouldn't really scratch the itch. I imagined her on the road ahead of me, rolling over the top of my car before crashing behind me on the concrete. My phone buzzed again and again. Heartbreaker was displayed on the screen. I reached for the phone just as the screeching of tires and the blaring of a horn pulled my eyes back to the road. An ambulance trying its best to warn me of the oncoming head-to-head -head collision. I pulled the steering wheel hard back into my lane, narrowly swerving around the ambulance. Its sirens grew quiet as it pulled away down the road. I exhaled and unclenched my grip on the steering wheel. Well, hey, I thought, if I did get in a wreck that or an ambulance right, someone else's life was probably in danger, though. Slouching back in my seat, I looked in the rearview mirror at my art supplies poking up out of the back seat, slightly obscuring my vision of the road behind me. Adjusting the rear view mirror, I checked that my hair looked okay and pushed a few sandy blonde strands back into place behind my glasses. I tried to smile. I was on the way to my first day on the job as a security guard. An artist in the area who owns a private studio and gallery. Why this artist would need a private security guard to watch the place overnight was beyond me. However, it paid very well and I was told I would have free time I could spend how I like so long as the job was being done well. The perfect opportunity to paint in what I imagine will be a beautiful location surrounded by inspiration and art. The road wound to the left, and the no outlet sign I was looking for came into view. Turning the car down the heavily wooded road, the twisting branches overhead and dense foliage bloated out what little sunlight was left in the darkening sky. I turned my brights on and eased off the gas. The isolated road stretched on into a veil of dark trees my headlights could not pierce. I drove in silence. The evening breeze stifled by the woods. The world lay still around me, reminiscent of an animal listening after a predator snaps a twig. A hot buzzing sensation pricked at my right cheek and urged to stare into the night festering, the urge to snap my head and catch whatever was staring at me. It built into something unbearable, and just as I was about to give in, the tree line came into view. A building at the end of the road centered in a black frame of dark trees and pavement, a twilight sky as the backdrop. I could see that it was one of those modern buildings. Flat white walls with oddly jetting architecture of contrasting colors, and an unsettling amount of glass revealing everything inside. Tall ferns and red pots, rows of paintings lining the walls of the hallways, and the man standing in the doorway. Deep breath, Jack. You already have the job, I muttered, wiping my hands dry. I put the car in park in the roundabout driveway and got out. Mr. Hope, a statement, not a question. The voice of a professional. Yep, I said, I'm Jack. We talked on the phone yesterday. Your shift starts at 10 p.m., said the man turning away, already stepping inside. I checked my watch, it read 9.52. Late, I sighed. I was supposed to arrive a half hour early for orientation. The man was already inside, walking towards a desk just off to the right of the front door. Mr. Brown Wright, I asked, what do I need for the shift? He didn't even so much as cock his head to the side to better hear what I was saying. Either he couldn't hear me or couldn't be bothered to listen. I locked my car and stepped inside. My glasses immediately fogged from the sudden temperature shift and I rubbed at the goosebumps on my arm. Hold on, I need my jacket. I said, turning back towards the door. There isn't time. Again, not a suggestion, but a command. Oh, well, okay. I thought, deciding I would just get the jacket later. I stepped over to the desk, my footsteps echoing on the marble floor. Listen closely, Mr. Brown turned around with a flashlight and a folder. Here is your flashlight and rules for the evening. The keys to lock up are in the top drawer. The lights for the building are next to the desk. Read the rules quickly and get started. Should you have any questions, I will answer them in the morning. Your shift ends at 0600. Trust the rules. Dropping the flashlight and folder in my hand, he stepped towards the door. Mr. Brown gripped the handle and opened his mouth to speak once more. There's a jacket in the bottom drawer. Good luck. The soft latching of the door closing behind him echoed throughout the hallways. I could hardly hear his black SUV as Mr. Brown started it and drove off. I opened the desk drawer and found the jacket. Navy blue with security printed in bright yellow on the back. I put it on, sat down, and opened the file. Inside was a single piece of paper with the rules of the job. I started reading through them. The black door in the basement is to remain closed at all times. What basement? I scanned the area around me and found the basement door was directly behind me. How did I not notice that before? It was one of the only sections of wall that wasn't glass. I really need to pay better attention. Sounds like something Heartbreaker would say. At the start of your shift, check that all windows and doors are locked. 
except for the door mentioned in Rule 1. At 10.30 p.m., cover the painting and evening in red with a sheet and promptly uncover it at 10.45 p.m. Oddly specific, look at the floor or when walking through the West Wing, never look up, no matter what you might see or hear. An uneasy feeling stirred in the bottom of my stomach. Music will start to play at midnight. When this happens, turn off the lights to the building and get under the security desk. The feeling grew when I quickly read through the last few rules. If you hear breathing, hold your breath until it stops. At 3, turn the breaker off in the basement, then follow its instructions. At 3.50, make sure you are in the west wing. Do not leave this wing until 3.30. From 5.55 to 6, run. Don't listen to what he is saying. Ha 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 ha! There's no way this is real, I laughed. I decided there wasn't any harm in following the rules, probably just a mean-spirited joke. I looked out the window to the right of me as the last of the twilight sky rolled behind the hills. My watch beeped. Ten o'clock. Well, better start locking up, I thought, but before I do, I smiled to myself, got up, and went outside. Ten minutes later, I had an easel set up with a fresh canvas and some paints laid out on the desk. I figured there would be no harm in killing time painting. This building was full of inspiration, just like I'd imagined. I glanced over at a particularly interesting painting, a red kite on the moon, the earth in the background, but the water was red and the land a pale brown. It was unnerving, but beautiful. Better get started, I said to the empty room. Reaching into the top drawer, I grabbed the key ring, got up from the desk and made my way counterclockwise through the building. My footsteps. Echoing softly through the halls, I kept an eye out for the painting with a label reading an evening in red. The dark forest on my right drew my eyes. The light from the building shone immediately ten feet. I tried not to think about it. Tried to avoid the hair standing on end, hot buzzing sensation crawling down my spine. The urge to spin around and look. Finally, I found the painting I was looking for. It was in the North Hall. It was an image of a meadow full of red flowers lit by a late autumn sky, loving detail given to each petal. The painting was lovely, but it felt wrong. I got the same feeling looking into the painting that I did looking at the dark woods behind me. Oh, grow up, Jack. It's just the woods, I told myself. Pulling my eyes away, I locked the secondary door directly across from the painting and kept moving. The building was shaped like a rectangle, just four halls looping into each other. There was a basement, apparently, but I had no reason to go down there until 3 a.m., as per rule number 7. I reached the west wing and remembered the rule to look at my feet just as I crossed the threshold. As I approached the hall, I noticed that this wing had no windows, just solid brick walls. Not even the same smooth white drywall like the rest of the building. The soft thud brought me to a halt. A second thud, and my heart began to pick up pace. A third thud, it was coming from somewhere else in the building. I walked to the southern wing, back to the start, and heard a fourth thud. It was coming from the east wing. I looked up to see three figures outside the windows, thud, and egg cracked against the glass. It's yoke running slowly down the glass. Hey, I said weakly, then again trying to instill more authority in my voice. Hey, wait, they can't hear me, I realized. I unlocked the front door and came around to the side. You kids can't be egging the windows. A suggestion, not a command. Oh, run, boys, cracked a voice, followed by hurried steps. By the time I got around the corner, they were already gone. I looked over at the window, five egg yolks frozen to the glass at various heights. Dang, I wonder if I'm supposed to clean that up. I checked my watch, 1028. I headed back to the building, conceding to cleaning up the egg later, and found the painting again in the north wing. A new figure was in the painting, a woman... She had long red hair, a dark red dress, and was looking straight at me. Her face was made up of only red eyes. They were open wide and locked with mine. I fumbled with my jacket and covered the painting as quickly as I could. I checked my watch. 10.31. The feeling in my gut grew to a nauseating level. Did I miss that lady in the painting before? Had she always been there? She was a small detail. I could have missed her, but she was definitely there the second time. The front door opened. I had forgotten to lock it behind me. Soft footsteps approached the west wing. Was it those teenagers again? Stepping closer to the west wing, I listened to the footsteps. Drawing closer, I peered down the hall quickly and saw the body lying on the floor, its navy blue jacket stained with blood. The footsteps stopped at what sounded like halfway down the west wing hallway, but all I could see was the body. I backed away from the hall, my heart beating hard in my chest. The sounds of paper fluttering came from behind me, from the security desk. 
I took quick but cautious steps back to the desk, peered around the corner and saw the folder and the rules list had been scattered on the floor. Then, I watched in horror as my easel lifted a foot in the air and splintered violently against the window. This wasn't worth for 150 a night. Dropping the key ring in the lobby, I ran out to my car, half concealed in darkness. My fingers were trembling as I fumbled with the car key. The key slid smoothly into the lock which popped with a twist. Jumping into the car, I locked the door and went for the ignition. Nothing, not even the clicking of an effort to start. No, 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 come on! I wrenched the keys forward again, and again nothing. A twig snapped in the woods to my left. I scanned the forest while moving as little as possible. Panning my eyes back and forth against the black tree line, the wind rustling the leaves and branches, I tried the car again, and again nothing. Another twig snapped closer this time. I looked into the dark and caught the faintest shifting of tree limbs, followed by the snapping of another twig. Something was stepping out of the woods. I jumped out of the car, not even closing the door behind me, and ran back into the building. I closed the door behind me, nearly dropping the keys, and locked the door. The painting! I checked my watch, 1044. I ran back to the north wing and pulled the jacket smartly away from the painting. The girl was gone. I let out a sigh of relief and sucked in a breath of cold air. I slipped the jacket back on and made my way to the desk, picking up the paper and the folder. I checked the rules. Nothing else for an hour and a half. All I had to do was sit here. Easy enough. I checked the light switches, making sure they work. The building was plunged into darkness with only a single switch. I snapped them back on. No need to be in the dark if I don't need to be. I checked the building one more time, making certain that there was no one else here, and sat down at the desk. Quiet washed over me. I took deep breaths, trying to steady my heart rate. Fifteen minutes passed and I decided to try and calm myself down with painting, easel or not. I had just propped my canvas up on the desk when my phone rang from an unknown number. Hello, I said, answering the phone. Hello, this is Mr. Brown. I just wanted to check up on you. Many prospects leave after the first hour. I wasn't sure what to say. I was scared and wanted to leave. But I also didn't want to disappoint. Plus, my car is dead. I think I made a few mistakes. I admitted. Hmm, what rules? Depending on the rule, you could be in quite a bit of tur. Mr. Brown's voice cut off in heavy static. Hello, hello? Yes, I am still here, said Mr. Brown, his voice cutting through the static. Well, I was late to cover the painting and I left the front door unlocked. I think someone entered the building, but I haven't seen anyone. Did you hear footsteps? Yes, I did. Where did they go? Think clearly, Mr. Hope. This is quite an important detail. E no, west to the west wing. Hmm, understood. You should be fine. The door is locked now, right? Yes, the door is locked. Good. Just follow the rest of the rules and you will be okay. It's almost midnight. I'd make sure you're near the lights. It can be quite fast. That concludes part one. Be sure to like, subscribe, and turn your notifications on to hear part two. Stay goofy. Stay creepy.